Hey friends, welcome to today's YouTube video. My name is James, welcome back to my channel. Welcome if you're new. I just woke up from a nap. Uh, I had an overnight rehearsal last night, so I didn't get home until just after 4.30 in the morning, and I had to wake up to take Steve to work, and I've kind of been in and out of napping since I got back, uh, but I also have to go to work again in a few hours, and I won't be back until tomorrow around the same time. <laughs> so I realized I haven't actually voiceovered this video and I wanted to make sure I got this out to you today because I love to have my videos up on Friday. That way you have something for the weekend. Also keeping it consistent for me is just usually better. Uh, in this video, I'm gonna be creating my mermaid book. I'm doing it, I'm doing it loves, I'm doing mermaid. Can you believe? <laughs> I think I've teased it out for long enough. And I think I even admitted that I was going to do it on YouTube, uh, on Instagram at this point. But I have the finished book right here. I'm just going to kind of go through with you the process of how I chose the book and because I'm doing it in this journal and what I've done because this is just the cover. But I like, I don't know, just the weirdest little thoughts crawled up inside me when I was thinking about what I wanted to do for Mermaid. And I figured just go with everything, like no thought is a wrong thought in this instance. Uh, there was no real objective to it. I'm not even planning to finish the challenge, to be honest. <laughs> My only uh, kind of thing that I wanted to achieve was to have most of it filmed, if not all of it filmed, before May actually even started, because I'd love to do daily videos for you in May. And that way I can come and chat to you just whenever, like I can put my camera on and just chat to you, maybe as I'm driving to work in the car, or I can go to the park and film myself walking around and chat to you there. So that all the, the chats that I wanna have, I can just add to those videos and we can spend the month together. Just, you'll be sick of me a weekend, but I'll be there anyway. <laughs> um, but yeah, I figured that would be a really fun thing to do, and especially because I'm just feeling so in between right now. If you know, uh, if you've been around my channel for long enough, you'll probably have seen that I go through these waves and these phases of, you know, trying different styles or working in different journals or doing, you know, uh, practicing different disciplines as far as creative creativity goes. Like, I just get into these little uh, creative frenzies that take me for as long as they take me, and then I completely bounce into something else, and that is... Uh, you know, it's the spice of life variety, right? And I just really lean into it. And so for Mermaid, I figured I would kind of do the same thing. I believe that was the first challenge I might have actually done on my YouTube channel years ago. And I think then I actually allowed myself to do anything I felt like doing for that, uh, for that day. And I think I did daily videos then too. And I'm pretty sure I remember a weird mermaid pinata paper cutting thing. <laughs> It looked pretty crazy. Uh, I even made a book. I made a journal for that. Or like an actual printed book kind of zine thing uh, that I sold of that first mermaid challenge. Now that I'm thinking about it, it really is all kind of flooding back to me. And I guess I've just circled back to the beginning. But the book I decided to use was a hardcover, uh, like it was a Daisy Ween book. Do you remember last year? Was it even last year? Was it the year before? When did we do that? It might have been the year before. <laughs> um, well, it feels like last year. Anyway, whenever we did that Daisy Ween prompts list, I made the uh, books that went along with them that I sold through Amazon. There was a soft cover one and a hard cover one. I ended up doing mine in a soft cover one, but I wanted to use the hard cover one. It's just I'd already started in it by the time uh, that I needed to do that challenge. So I ended up not doing anything with the hard cover ones. I did have a bit of a scribble in there at some point, and I thought maybe eventually I would use them for something. Maybe I'd try the challenge again, or I would transpose the images that I'd done, the illustrations, I'd make them kind of new in there and, you know, do a second go at it. But I never really did anything, and they just kind of sat down there underneath my table. And I just happened upon it the other day as I was getting rid of some empties. Every time one of my art supplies is empty, I've got a box under the table that I, it's just an empties box. And I saw it, and I just thought, huh, you know, I'm, I'm deciding I'm going to do the mermaid challenge. I was thinking about getting one of my new journals out, but I realistically didn't want to use a journal that had too many pages in it because I didn't want to have a whole challenge in there and then use the journal for something else as well. I don't know. I just kind of wanted it all to be contained in one journal. And then I thought about making one, making one of those big jumbo journals and doing it in there. The re like the reality of filming those is just so much harder because you have to get so much further back to fit it on the table. So... Practic practically speaking, I was just not interested in uh, dealing with that. But yeah, I saw it down there and I thought, well, this mermaid challenge is, you know, 
31 days of prompt. And essentially these books, the Daisy Ween ones, were made with the prompts at the bottom of the page for 31 days of prompts. Uh, there's a few pages at the beginning, at the end, some cover pages and some intro stuff, but I figured that would be the perfect book to use, even though I knew it was going to be mixed media and I knew I was going to want to throw a lot of mixed media at it and that paper is just not the best for that. It is just a book that's done through Amazon and when you do that through Amazon, they kind of send it to different uh, local, I guess local-ish to your area. Wherever you order it from, there is different companies that uh, do the drop shipping. So essentially they will take the files, they'll make the book and then they'll distribute it out. So it's not Amazon themselves that do it, they kind of hire these third party contractors to do it. And I've had some from different places. Sometimes in the back they say where they've been made and they've been from different factories. Uh, so the paper stock can run a little different sometimes. I don't believe they standardize it, um, but you can get a premium option. You can get a regular stock option, a color option, a black and white option. So I believe the ones I did for Daisy Ween and this book in particular was, it's the hardcover. So it's a premium black and white stock uh, paper. So it's sketch paper. It's not copy paper, it's not as thin as like, you know, copy paper you put in your printer, but it's just a step above that. <laughs> uh, really doesn't take wet media that well, and I can already tell you, I've filmed a bunch of mermaids already. I just lent right into it. Like, it is just gonna be whatever it is. It's actually really encouraged me to let go and free up and loosen up because there, it's, it's literally like, there's nothing I can do to help it. I might as well just lean in and one of the, papers started ripping off so I just ended up ripping off the whole section of it and it created this really interesting uh like line for the mermaid like I, I really am actually enjoying it so all of this to say like I've just been leaning into if I feel like that's something I should do just go straight for it don't even second guess it it is one of the things that I've been loving about my jumbo journals and even my journal that I've been using more recently that I have not just I've not stopped to really overthink anything, and I'm really loving the results of that. I'm not even saying I was a big overthinker before, but I did consider a few things. Like, I was I was intentional for the most part. This time, I'm just really going a little bit reckless, if I'm honest. So, <laughs> this has been really fun. The cover, however, was just the plain Daisy Ween cover. You might have kind of seen it as the video started. I had already started painting it at this point and I had no intention of filming doing the cover, but I thought you might find it interesting because I was going to just build it in stages and I've been working on this cover for a couple of weeks now and it has really just come to life, uh, you know, every time I've picked it up and put something a little bit extra on there. So I've used almost every supply I could throw at it, bar crayons and pencils really, and this is it. This is the whole process of it. I added a mermaid to it or a mermaid adjacent, you know, piece of illustration whenever I felt like it. I used mostly paint markers and uh, Sharpie markers, but I, like I said, I've used a bunch of different stuff on there. Some stuff worked, some stuff really didn't. I didn't really know what was going to work and I figured if it didn't work, then I could just move on to the next thing. And if it did, lucky me, hooray. So I put a mermaid on there whenever I felt like it and just added little bits and pieces and it really just kind of came together. I didn't film absolutely every time I worked on it, but a lot of it. So you'll see like, as it cuts from one clip to another, maybe three extra mermaids turn up. That was something I must have just done in the middle of the night when I didn't put the, the camera on. Cause sometimes I just, I still don't. Like I know I used to rave on about keeping parts of your passion, you know, separate from your business, but YouTube is not like, it, fun it has a function for my business, but it's not like my main source of income or anything. So it doesn't feel like I'm working, working at it. But there is still this divide for me where I feel like, you know, filming and being cognizant of the setup and how it's all working, that actually feels like a bit of work. So if I'm not in the mood to concern myself with that kind of a thing, then I won't film it and I just tell myself, you know, have have the 10 minutes, have the 20 minutes just for some free time, just for yourself. And so I haven't separated, you know, I haven't delineated between this is work and this is my passion. I really still try to cross and blur those boundaries as much as I can, because if your work can be your passion, like that's great. There's really nothing better. So I don't try to make it really strict, rigid rules that way, but I do give myself the freedom to not film if I just feel like I just want to take it easy. And luckily enough, there was a lot going on. So I, there's still a lot to still like to see, 
Um, but some of my mates do just pop up out of nowhere. <laughs> and it's funny because even inside the book, I've been filming at the beginning of each video, I'm planning on, uh, I, I put the book into frame and I kind of flip the cover. I think I started doing that a few videos in. I might not have done it in the beginning, um, but I flip the cover so you can kind of see the process of it. And then I'll start to uh, flip through the journal itself. And when I flip through the journal, you can see that some things that weren't there the day before are suddenly there. Like there's a new mermaid in the front or I've painted a whole bunch of pages. And I think that's really interesting too, because, you know, I, I film, I'm not filming them daily, like sometimes I've filmed a few in a day, but even in between videos, I've caught the urge while the camera's off just to add something else, just to quickly sketch something out or to try something. And I'm just, I'm like, I'm really loving the process. I don't think I can get across to you how much fun I'm having doing it. I hope all the videos, uh, you know, work out and we can, we can really get it going. I think I'm about a week into it already. Uh like a week's worth of videos into it and I plan on doing a bunch more over the weekend whenever I can get some time really. I've got uh, my 5 year Hobonichi music only video that I want to put out as well and I've still got to chat through my whole 5 year Hobonichi. I've been dealing with some allergies so I figured I'd just wait on that. No one wants to hear hours worth of a nasal Australian accent. Trust me, I would know. <laughs> I don't want to hear it. That's who doesn't want to hear it the most. Oh, I shaved. Did you see? I don't love shaving, but this is just one job I have to shave for every time it comes around and it's fine. Um, I guess, do you think it makes me look any younger? I don't think so. I, this is my argument that the beard doesn't make, well, I mean, I think it makes me look a touch older, but I don't think shaving it off makes me look young. I don't really think I look any younger than 33. <laughs> I think I'm bang on 33. <laughs> Maybe a little older, who knows? Do not weigh in on the comments on that, please. I've just woken up from a nap, so you'd be a little bit kind to me because I'm, I'm a little bit more tired looking than usual. Uh, it's, a, it's fine. So this is the cover. I've done it. I actually bought a plastic protector because some of this uh, paint, it's it, the book cover itself was a glossy surface, so I expected the whole thing to just kind of peel off. Do you know when you put paint on a glossy surface, you can peel it back up? Uh, so I figured instead of risking everything peeling off and even using a fixative I felt like wouldn't have helped that I just needed to make sure it was sandwiched you know on there and originally I just was gonna use packing tape but I thought you know what maybe not every first thought is the best thought <laughs> can you imagine just packing tape all over it also I didn't want it to yellow like that um so I got a plastic cover from Amazon that was I believe this is US letter size this book it's quite big and I tried to put it on there but because it's hardcover it wasn't fitting over the edge. You see me take the heat tool to it and kind of melt the plastic to fit and, you know, make it work. I struggled with it for about six full minutes and I did consider putting it in this video just real time just to annoy everybody. <laughs> I figured if I had to be annoyed, you'd have to be annoyed too, but I did speed it up right at the end so you can see that, um, that fit on there. And I think I want to say it's done because I put the cover on and I really don't see myself taking it off because it's not easy to take on and off. So unless I take a white paint marker to the top of the cover, <laughs> it's done. I'm going to call this cover done. And uh, you'll see, I guess, a week into the mermaid videos, when I put the book into frame and flip it, you'll see the plastic cover and you'll see, oh, there's the cover there. It's done. Then you'll be able to cross reference uh, how early in April I started filming all of this because <laughs> it'll be May by the time people start seeing any of the mermaid stuff. However, there is another video I want to put out. I can feel the allergies coming, so I'll leave you in a minute. I am, there's another video I want to put out just before May that is like, I want to teach a, a lesson on uh, one of the pieces that I did. I think it's the day two piece that I did because I think it's great for anyone who wants to participate in Mermaid but either doesn't have a lot of time or doesn't want to stress about an idea or just wants to create something kind of really fun. Like it's a, it's, it's kind of like, like a mix and match type thing, but it's all these columns of mermaids. I, I don't know. I'll show you it. I'll make the little tutorial. Hopefully I can get it out to you before May. Uh, fingers crossed. I'm actually, I'll take all that back. What if I don't make it? I don't know. I'm not promising anything, but I do have plans to make it. I even did a whole diagram in my uh, journal. This is what makes me think I'm going to do it uh, because I've already put out how I would teach it all and kind of the variations on things that I wanted to hit. 
but I think it'd be a really fun thing for people to do. And you don't have to do it daily. I mean, you could just do 31 of them and call the challenge complete. But I really do like, you know, suggesting anything I can think of to help people make it to the end. I think challenges are a really good idea. I, I say this every time that I do them, but you know, they can be really great for people. They can also be a little bit bad for some people, depending on who you are and what you're going through and how you are. But you know, for me, the challenges were always great. If I wanted to learn something, sure, that's kind of a byproduct of doing anything, you know, in repetition. Um, you could just learn that you're bad at it. That's something you could learn too. <laughs> um, or that you just don't like it. I mean, there's lots of things to learn. They're not all positive. But obviously, you can learn things by doing anything repetitive, repetitively, repeatedly. There's also, you know, this sense of accomplishment and achievement that I think is great fuel for people. It can be very motivating to feel like you've done a good job or you've actually completed something. That's why I set really manageable, achievable tasks. And I mean, it's gotten so out of hand at this point. My, <laughs> I call it a success if I even just show up to do it. <laughs> I don't have to finish or anything. If I just turn up, like I've won. Uh, but you know what? I feel like I'm just, I feel like I'm swinging from rope to rope of success when I just have all these really manageable, achievable goals. And the more successful you feel, the more confident you feel. And you can really feed off of that uh, for some good delusion and to move forward in a very confident, uh, very happy way. So that's kind of the way I live my creative life. But ultimately, if you're on the other side of that coin, it can be a little tricky because if you're someone that struggles to finish things, or you're someone that doesn't, uh, you know, you set tasks and always finds yourself falling a bit short, that can actually exacerbate this feeling of, of inadequacy and, you know, being insufficient or it, it just, you can really start to feel insecure about your abilities about, and your confidence kind of takes a little bit of a hit. Maybe it doesn't feel like that straight up and maybe, you know, it depends on how much stock you put into actually finishing and achieving these things. But even on a small scale, over time, if those things start to, you know, build up, you start to see yourself and perceive yourself as this person that just can't finish anything. And there's just, just not good at tackling a challenge or, you know, isn't able to do something that you see many, many other people able to do. So my, my two cents on challenges is just do them. If you feel like doing them, make the goals extremely achievable, if not somewhat absolutely ridiculous so that you can manage to achieve it. Because, you know, it just is not great to feel, oh, my nose is literally leaking. See, here come, this is, this is the, uh, this is the reason I don't do it with the allergies. <laughs> like, I can see it. Sorry about that. It's the cats. Um, if you, I, mean, I trust you know yourself to know all of this, but I, I like to reiterate it every time I do a challenge because sometimes, you know, people just don't think about these things and you see videos like this that seem to all just come together but you know hopefully I can shed some reality on the situation I really do feel motivated to do it I really am enjoying it and that is you know, joy and you know kind of excitement is a great motivator in and of itself uh, but I also have in different incentives to want to do well at challenges you know this is a part of my business realistically to be able to share content with you and you know it doesn't look great for me if I'm trying to teach workshops to people and then also can't manage to do anything myself <laughs> you know it wouldn't be a good look um, it might be realistic there have definitely been times where I just haven't done you know that Daisy uh, the Daisy one, the travel journal Daisy, travel Daisy, whatever that was. I didn't even get a quarter of the way through that, I don't think. Uh, and I think at that point I knew I wasn't going to, so I don't believe I even set the challenge of doing it all, but I just gave out the list and wanted people to have it just in case. Um, but yeah, I mean, keep all those things in mind. Mermaid is, it's fun because I love mermaids. So I'm always kind of doing mermaid. Uh, but most, mostly what I would love to do is just have daily videos so I can chat to you more often because so much happens and there's so many things I just love to discuss and topics I'd love to bring back. And I feel like every Friday I'm getting with you, I'm just kind of dumping out all this information about, you know, a busy schedule that I have and how I managed to fit it all in. And sometimes that feels a little hectic. I don't want to talk about that at all. I guess I couldn't. I could just <laughs> talk about what I want to talk about. Um... But yeah, no, I'm feeling like May is going to be a really great time for us to just chat about anything and everything. So if there's anything you want to talk about, if there's any topics of conversation you feel like I haven't talked about in a, forever, or you just have any really random specific questions, uh, leave them in the comments and I'll take a note of any of those things and obviously try and hit on as much as I can, if not all of it. And it doesn't have to be art journaling related. It can be absolutely anything related. There are some things I can't speak about. Uh, like a lot of work that I do at Disneyland, I can't really speak about just because that's a part of that job. Um, 
I can typically speak about what I do at Knott's Berry Farm, but to some same degree, like some of that, you know, magic has to be a little bit preserved. Um, that's funny. That's a funny play on words of both, <laughs> both jobs. The, uh, <laughs> that I think only I would get. So, you know what? I'll have that laugh to myself. <laughs> the, but like personal questions about life and dancing and stories. I mean, I don't mind. I'm a pretty open book. Uh, at this point anyway, do you remember when I wasn't? Not that I wasn't, but I do remember being so much more guarded in the earlier days uh, of YouTube. I just felt like it was, like, I don't know. <laughs> Let's not go into that conversation, because I will be here for another 30 minutes talking about it. There was just a whole sense of responsibility I felt in the earlier days that... I don't know. I think I think social media has changed in a way. I think a lot of the parasocial relationships that developed earlier on have shifted. And I think maybe culturally we've kind of detached a little bit, you know, some of the emotions that we feel online that we used to feel very strongly. Maybe that's just where I'm at. Maybe my whole perspective has kind of shifted and maybe that's the way I'm seeing it. Because ultimately, I don't think anyone's really told me that. But um yeah, I do. I do remember back in the earlier days, a lot, there was a lot more feelings and a lot more, you know, very close attachments to things. And I felt a very big responsibility to make sure that, uh, you know, I was kind of managing all that. I still do kind of feel the same way. Like, I don't want to leave you worse off than I found you. So hopefully in a video, like, even if it's a heavier topic or things that I'm, you know, struggling with, or I get a little emotional, hopefully there's still, you know, some kind of light at the end of the tunnel uh, type message in those videos because, you know, my goal is to leave everyone exactly how I found you, kind of neutral or with some kind of positive impact, uh, but never worse off. I wouldn't want anyone to come to my YouTube channel and feel worse. Although I was chatting to trolls in the comments last week, so <laughs> maybe I left two people feeling worse. I don't think so. They were pretty harmless. I actually haven't been trolled that much in years, uh, to be honest. Uh, so anyone that saw that on my Instagram, I was just having a bit of fun. It really does not bother me at all. And my sentiment still holds true. I think sometimes, as non-constructive as that feedback is, um, sometimes I think it's better that people just know straight up, oh, this is not a channel for me. And I make no, uh, like, grand illusions for myself to believe that I am for everyone. In fact, I think I'm pretty much for no one. I talk incessantly about things that people don't generally care about. Um, but I figured that if I put them out on the internet, someone's going to listen. <laughs> you guys listen. <laughs> My mom doesn't listen. No, she does. Ironically now, she'd probably listen more on the internet than ever if I told her in person, face to face. My mom was the person like, when we we're, I was on the trampoline, we used to have at a house, at like a, what are they called? Townhouse that we lived at. Uh, she, we could look out the window where she was doing the dishes and the trampoline was right outside and I'd be jumping and doing all my flips and I'd be like, mom, mom, look, look. And I would flip and I knew every single time she just, she would want to show that she was interested, but she had other stuff to do. She's busy. Um, and so she would keep doing the dishes and I would literally flip, look, lock my eyes on her upside down, see that she looked away, land and be like, mom, you didn't look, mom look, please look, look until I'm finished. <laughs> like, I always wanted to share all of that with her. And she was, I mean, she was as interested as she could be, but it's funny to me now that she like comes to my virtual voyage workshops and will participate with her grandchildren and has her own journals and like buys expensive watercolors because she sees me using them on, on the thing. Like, it's so bizarre to me that she participates this way because growing up, that's, that was not the case at all. My gran was the one who would really get involved and do all of it. But my mom, my mom was just always busy. She was always busy working and keeping everything running and in order. So I understand, but, um, yeah, I don't know how I got onto that. Oh yeah. Sometimes she listens to my videos to fall asleep. Good for her. <laughs> it's better than taking a pill, I guess. Oh, uh, a NyQuil? Does NyQuil put you to sleep? Melatonin. I don't take anything. I have no problems getting to sleep, but I do have problems uh, not having insane dreams. You know, if, if I drink caffeine anywhere close to when I'm falling asleep, the caffeine activates this part of my imagination, my subconscious just goes crazy. Like I have the wildest dreams and I know it's not fun to talk about other people's dreams. I'm not going to tell you any specifics, but what is really, really interesting about the way that I dream is that 
most of the time, the dream, I can pinpoint exactly where different experiences or thoughts or little snapshots, little vignettes of a day that happened influenced the story of that dream. Like sometimes, you know, I'll watch a certain thing on, just say I'm watching like Peter Pan and I hear the alarm clock ticking and then the crocodile comes up. Like in my dream, there'll be a crocodile and I'll have like missed waking up at my alarm and then I'll have to run out of the house and there's a crocodile chasing me. Like all of those things that I have subconsciously picked up throughout the days or the week prior to one specific dream, they'll all kind of flourish into this really hectic imaginary world. And it can be anything too. Like I've told Steve, this is random things. Like I had a thought about something because of a YouTube video I watched and I thought about it just for about 10 minutes and was really interested in the thought and it popped up in my dream. It was the whole, it was the whole plot of the dream. Insane. So anyway, that usually happens if I have a lot of caffeine before I go uh, to sleep, which is my plan. I'm going to have uh, the rest of my McCafe cappuccino and go have another nap before I head out for work. So fingers crossed I don't have a... Uh, well, I mean, I've been talking about mermaids. Hopefully the mermaids pop up in my dream, but hopefully nothing too sinister. I haven't had a nightmare in a while, so it's about time. <laughs> Let's get into it. This is my Mermaid 2024 journal. I'm so excited for it all to start and to give you that little tutorial, hopefully, before Mermaid starts, just in case you want something that you can, uh, you know, get through that's manageable, that's fun. It's a little retro looking. I really enjoy it. So I'm really hoping to get that out to you before May starts. And also uh, hope that you'll join me in May. I have to admit, the first Mermaid video is not my favorite. So if you can just get through that first one, we'll have a blast after that. <laughs> <laughs> or we'll just count this as the first one. This was relaxed. This was fun. Um, yeah, the first mermaid piece, you know, it's so annoying because I, I give myself these no rules and I think in my head like, oh, I'm going to put all my art all over my desk. I'm just going to throw everything out. It's going to be so fun. And like, I'll spend 10 minutes on it. Just move on to the next one. But inevitably, the first attempt always ends up being too much. I always do too much. I always you know, add too much and I always try to clean it up too much. You know, I don't think I overthought it, but it was more than I had anticipated doing. Like it was more energy and commitment to the first piece than I ever wanted to do. So that's why I immediately went straight on to the second, did what I thought, like I, just a random idea that popped into my head, loved it so much, developed that lesson that I want to teach you about it. And that's where I think it started to free me up a little bit. It's kind of, you know, had to get the first one out of the way. When Steve and I do photo shoots at the studio, the first look that we do with a client usually is something very simple, like jeans and a t-shirt, because those are very, you know, kind of casual images to get into. But also you really need that first one to kind of warm up. So if we put the best most, you know, avant-garde look on someone immediately and expect them to just turn it out, uh, you know, that can be a lot more of a struggle. So I think everyone just kind of needs to ease into it in the beginning. And hopefully, uh, hopefully that was my, my throwaway piece. It's not even a bad piece. It was just more than I wanted to do. And you know, when you set yourself up with an expectation to do like hardly anything and then do too much, I mean, that's just a weird problem to have. <laughs> I wish I could do that in life. <laughs> Why is that just a, an art journaling related thing for me? Yeah, it was, it was frustrating. I was like, this is not as carefree as it needs to be. So that's the first episode. I'm really selling it to you, right? Uh, no, we'll be, we'll be fun. We'll have some chat. Remember, leave any, uh, anything you want to chat about in the comments below. Um, and I'll probably ask again at some point as well, just in case people don't get to that point of this video, but hopefully have a lovely weekend. And if you're doing Mermaid, I hope to uh, cheer you on, on the sidelines as well. And yeah, make sure you let me know on Instagram or tag me or at me or whatever we do on Instagram. I'd love to see it. I'm always around. I don't post every day. I've been better about posting and getting in my Insta stories. But even now, I've when my schedule gets too crazy uh, with dance, I just don't find myself posting a ton. And I would like to fix that, actually. But I think Mermaid will kind of fix that because I have something to show every day. Um, but yeah. That's it for me. Have a lovely day, everyone. Until next time, bye.